8 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and take the roll call and proceed with our business. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Commissioners Antor. Baker. Here. Vice Chair Breeby. Here. Commissioners Bujak. Burl. Here. DeBoer. Diaz. Here. Green. Hennessy. Hildenbrand. Here. Coleman. Here. Legrand. Here. McLeod. Here. Merchant. Here. Oliver King. Pakla, Ponstein, Sparks, Teal, Here. Wooden, Chair Stack. Here. Mr. Chair, you have 12 members present, nine absent. You have a quorum. Thank you very much. I'll move then on to our, um, our primary, if not only, item of business for this morning, and that is the question of whether we extend the state of emergency. Uh, as many of you know that after the storms and the tornadoes that went through this county, uh, it was assessed by our emergency manager and, uh, and recommended that we go ahead and declare a local state of emergency, which I did. Uh, that local state of emergency declaration is valid for no more than seven days. And so the only way to extend that is through board action, and that's why we're here today. So I've asked Matt to join us, bring you up to current on uh, where we are in response to the storms, and then uh, we'll take a motion. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just a quick, uh, a brief synopsis on the storms on uh, August 24th. Um, the primary damage area that we've been spending a lot of our time in is obviously the tornado area that started roughly at uh, Alpine Avenue, or sorry, Baumhoff Avenue in Six Mile, proceeded in roughly a straight line all the way uh, through portions of Alpine and Plainfield Township and ended right on uh, Childsdale near Crows. Uh, and there were many neighborhoods that were affected, including a trailer park uh, <coughs> along Alpine Avenue, several businesses. Um, the tornado was categorized as an EF1, which uh, means roughly 110 mile per hour winds, uh, did significant damage uh, to not only uh, thousands of trees in that area, but also uh, quite a few uh, buildings, 206 to be exact, that we've uh, done damage assessment on so far. Uh, out of that 206 number, uh, eight, uh, eight buildings have been destroyed. Uh, 39 I have been categorized in the major damage, uh, 91 have been categorized as minor, and 68 have been categorized as affected. Uh, we have seen many of the single family dwellings uh, have roughly close to 100% insurance on the building itself, so any trees uh, and such that did damage to the building. Uh, those are covered uh, from what we have been able to tell during our damage assessment. However, any trees that did not fall on the building uh, but are still laying all over people's yards and in between houses and that type of thing, those are not generally covered in most uh, insurance policies. Uh, in terms of some of the uninsured properties, uh, we do have several that were in that trailer park that had trees literally cut the trailers uh, in two in some cases uh, kind of cut a corner right off the end of one of their uh, uh, their trailers making it uninhabitable uh, there were four to six of those depending on how you measure there as well and unfortunately we have run into several uninsured uh, families out there now thankfully most of them uh, were able to be uh, sort of replaced in a different uh, trailer park that was owned by the same company. Uh, so the, co the property management there has been working with us to make sure that people's needs are met. And then 211 has been a fantastic partner all throughout this, making sure that any additional needs, um, you know, can be tied to uh, programs that we have here in the community. So that is kind of the general synopsis on the event. Um, you know, I think the activity that we have had uh, in the past couple weeks now has largely been damage assessment. We've really been trying to get uh, Department of Equalization and others out into the field so that we have both an idea on the dollar amount, but really you know, a look at what the uh, categorical uh, damage has been because a lot of those things relate to potential funding uh, opportunities through federal and state partners. And so that has been kind of a huge push of ours to try to stay ahead of as we've been working through this. Um, 
We've been on the ground. We've walked many of the neighborhoods. Uh, I know Commissioner Green and I have actually, uh, you know, met with some of the residents in the affected areas. Um, and there's there's a lot of sad stories uh, that came from this event. And so we're, we're really trying to do is make sure that we are doing everything within the county's power to uh, to provide the necessary resources for our community to recover. And so that brings us to the reason that we're all gathered here early. So thank you again for coming in early for this, by the way. Um, but what we're asking you to consider is a an extension to the uh, declaration of emergency that uh, the chair has already mentioned went into effect, I believe, on the 29th. Um, and what that does for us is several things. Um, one, we are really uh, trying to embolden the county's position that we still need some state resources uh, to mitigate some of the debris management that we have in those two townships in particular. Uh, and the way that we intend to do that is through some of the volunteer organizations assisting in disaster or VOADs. Uh, you may know of some of those uh, groups in terms of uh, World Renew. Southern Baptist Convention. Um, believe it or not, they actually will come into Michigan to assist with this type of uh, debris management. And so we have made a request early in the event uh, for some of those teams and we've ever since that request. Um, secondly, uh, there are volunteer protections that the, those VOAD groups come under when we have a declaration <coughs> in place. Um, if, you know, this is dangerous work that they're doing. They're going to be going into neighborhoods and trying to assist people by cutting up some of the trees that they have that are in between their house. Maybe they weren't insured for those uh, removals and then bringing them out to the roadway where the road commission and the townships have a collaborative uh, deal going right now where they will uh, kind of do the cleanup. Once all the volunteers have left the neighborhood, they'll do the cleanup, get it uh, from a skid steer into a dumpster and take it off to be chipped off site. Um, and so this is sort of part of that is kind of, you know, really trying to get some of the debris out of, um, out of those neighborhoods onto the road where they can be processed. Uh, and then lastly, it's, it's really setting ourselves up for the um, type of funding that we think we're most likely to get, which would be state section 19 funding. Uh, that's part of PA 390 and 1976, section 19 of that act deals with a state contingency fund uh, for emergencies and disasters that can be utilized uh, for this type of um, reimbursement to local units of government. Uh, the types of programs that would offer individual assistance right into the hands of the homeowners, um, we've done the math on that. We don't believe that we are anywhere close to the thresholds required to receive those types of federal uh, reimbursements and so we're focused on the state 19 uh, section 19 funding all right that's kind of a synopsis on sort of the why we're here um, I guess up to well, you but if there's any questions I can let's answer. take a motion and then we'll see if there's questions for you so uh, I believe I'm gonna call on Commissioner Green for that Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to move resolution number 83 of today's state, which would extend the declaration of the state of emergency in Kent County. For the record, the written uh, notice is on the back of your agenda. And that was supported by Commissioner Teal. Okay. Now, it's before us. Uh, any questions or comments? Well, you wowed them, Matt. Good for you. <laughs> All right, if there are no more questions or comments, um, is this roll call? Yes. I believe Commissioner Green. Thank you, uh, Chair, and I don't, I don't have any um, questions, but I just do have a brief comment. Um, I just wanted to offer my thanks to Matt and Scott Corbin um, for the work that they've done. Um, Matt's a guy I think that none of us talk to until we have to, and when we have to, it's a... Uh, um, we need a lot of conversation, and uh, I know neither of these guys got a lot of sleep um, in the aftermath, immediate aftermath and since the storm came through. So um, appreciate all the communication and the work that's gone into the response, not only on the behalf of the county, um, emergency management, sheriff's office, um, but also the communication the night of the storm with local um, uh, police, fire, um, just an excellent response, and then um, working through um, the demands and needs of residents in the aftermath. Um, I know this didn't impact a lot of us directly, geographically, a relatively small swath, but 
um, it was a big impact in, in our neck of the woods. So um, just wanted to say thank you um, and appreciate um, the coordination and communication um, from the county's end. Anyone else? Okay, if not, this is a roll call. Madam Clerk, will you take the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 83, Commissioners Antor, Baker, yes. Vice Chair Breevy, yes. Commissioners Bujak, Burrell, yes. DeBoer, yes. Diaz, yes. Green, yes. Hennessy, Hildenbrand, yes. Coleman, yes. Legrand, yes. McLeod, yes. Merchant, yes. Oliver King, yes. Pecla, Ponstein, yes. Sparks, Teal. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Steck. Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 83 is adopted. Thank you very much. All right. We have a few things on our agenda, including public comment. If there was anyone here from the public that wishes to address us, I think this is a general jurisdiction. Um, public comment. Good morning. How you doing? Good. I'm DeAndre Jones, I prefer D. Jones. I stay at 967 Tamarack Avenue, Northwest. Uh, first off, I want to give uh, condolences to people that lost property and things like that. I actually have a friend named Erin Foley, and one of the trees actually uh, landed on her house, and now her whole top of her roof is smashed. So I've seen the impact of this uh, tornado and stuff like that. So it's cool to see that the King County government is actually doing something about it. I actually wanted to... Uh, do the um, emergency training that they have with the fire department. But I was actually at an eSports event, so I couldn't actually be uh, learning how I can be able to help my city if anything like that happens. But I'd like to tell you guys about the stuff that I've been doing with eSports. So as you know, I recently just did an um, eSports competition at the National Guard base where I educated people on climate change and renewable energy. And it was people from the hood. If you look at all of those Pictures and the pictures that are taken from my competitions, all of these are well documented. The whole journey through me going through the process of getting everything to me actually doing is actually well documented. But I ended up doing this esports competition. It was super powerful. And I'm glad that I actually got to educate people on climate change and renewable energy because people usually don't care about the climate or the environment until bad things happen, like a tornado or other things like that. And some of these things are, you know, natural. But some of these things we do cause, uh, Americans and humans do cause. And so I was really glad that I got to educate people on that because I got to speak to the congresswoman. And uh, I got to go to her office. And I didn't know you could bring cell phones and stuff like that. So I had to take that <coughs> long walk back. But then I got to chop it up with her team about just my vision and things I'm doing. And I'm glad to say that I got her support on my future endeavors or grants or anything that I'm trying to do positive in the community. And then I got to learn that they actually have a competition where young adults or Kids 6th through 12th grade actually have a competition that they have a congressional competition where kids can make apps or they can make video games to educate people on actual uh, real world issues, societal issues and issues that people cause. And so as I'm working with Kent District Libraries because I connected with Epic Games who makes the game Fortnite, which I'm sure you guys have heard of Fortnite before. And so I actually connected Epic Games to KDO and it happened faster than I thought, but they actually connected and now they're going to have the Unreal Creator, the Unreal 5 Engine Creator, and the Unreal 5 Fortnite Creator at Kent District Libraries. We're going to have some powerful gaming tools at the libraries in the school districts and I can't wait for these kids and these adults and everybody to be able to use these powerful gaming tools from Epic games this is one of the biggest gaming companies in the world with one of the powerfulest engines on the planet and I actually was able to get that to my community to my county to my school district to my libraries and I can't wait for people to be able to utilize these programs and you guys will be hearing a lot about that coming up thank you thank you anyone else all right I don't see anyone else we'll move to the next item which is miscellaneous does any commissioner have a miscellaneous item All right, if not, I just a couple of things. First of all, uh, to our emergency manager, Matt uh, Grosser, and your staff, uh, thank you for all the efforts that you have put forward in the response to this, uh, to this event. Um, it is, uh, it's been noted, and, uh, and uh, thank you so much. Also to the Road Commission for their response uh, to, uh, to this challenge. Uh, also, thank you to Commissioners Green and Teal. I know these probably hit your districts more than anyone else, and, uh, and both of you stepped up, and we appreciate uh, you representing us so well 
in the response. And then also thank all of you for coming in the day after a holiday at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, especially if you're not on finance and you're still here. So um, thank you so much for showing up and, uh, and helping us to take care of this business. So. All right, uh, with that, I will call on Vice Chair Breeby for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Supported? Supported. All in favor say yes. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you all again. Mm -hmm.